When we have a one-way or two-way table of counts, bar charts provide a very effective means of visualizing the data. But how do we visualize more complex tables, such as this four-way table of counts? The answer is by using a mosaic plot. Mosaic plots are a very powerful tool for visualizing and exploring tables of counts. In a mosaic plot, the cells of the table are depicted using a set of boxes arranged in rows and columns, where the size of each box is proportional to the cell count it represents. Let's have a go at creating a mosaic plot using one of GenStat's example data sets. This data involves the passengers of the ill-fated ship, the Titanic. The data records each individual's survival outcome, sex, age and ticket class, ranked from first class to third class, plus crew members. It's a tragic topic, but an interesting data set. To create a mosaic plot of this data, open the graphics menu and select Mosaic Plot. In the Table to Plot field, we need to specify a table of counts to plot. But you'll notice that when I move the cursor into this field, nothing appears in available data. Regular users of GenStat will know that the available data field is context sensitive. When you put the cursor into a field, available data will display any data in GenStat's memory that could be used to populate that field. The field is empty because currently there aren't any tables of counts available. So our first step is to create a table of counts from this data set. The example data we have here is in spreadsheet form, with each row representing an individual passenger. To create a table, click Create Summary Table. This opens the Frequency Tables dialog, enabling us to create our table of counts. We want to create a four-way table of counts by age, ticket class, sex, and survival outcome. Select every item and move them all into the Groups field. Enter a meaningful name for the table, then click Run. The output shows our Titanic Counts four-way table of counts, and GenStat automatically puts this into the Table to Plot field. We no longer need the Frequency Table menu, so I'll right-click and close it. The next step is to specify the factors to be plotted across the columns and down the rows of the mosaic plot. Importantly, the plot will change depending on which factors we put into the column and row fields and their ordering within these fields. To demonstrate, we'll compare two examples. The ordering of the factors in the column and row factor fields defines their hierarchy in the plot. For example, here the column factors are ordered survived, age and sex, meaning that columns in the mosaic plot are split by the factor survived then by the factor age, and finally by the factor sex. The ordering also affects the position of the factor's labels. The labels of the last column factor are displayed in the lower margin, and all others are displayed in the upper margin. Similarly, the labels of the last row factor are displayed in the left margin, and all others are displayed in the right margin. Finally, and very importantly, the boxes of the mosaic plot are coloured according to the last factor in the row factors field. So, in this first example, the boxes are coloured according to ticket class. Crew are coloured red, first class are green, second class are blue, and third class are coloured white. Here, the data show the changing proportions of ticket class within the other three factors, survived, age, and sex. Conversely, in the second example, the boxes are coloured according to survival outcome, and thus the mosaic plot depicts the changing proportion of survival within the other three factors. For this data set, what we're most interested in is how survival changes according to the other factors, so it should be our last row factor. Let's plot class, followed by sex, across the columns, and age, followed by survived, down the rows. Note that all factors in the table must be assigned to either the columns or the rows of the mosaic plot. Moving on to the Options tab, we can use these settings to control the appearance of our mosaic plot. I'll enter a meaningful title, keep the font settings at their defaults, 
and keep the title positioned in the center. You can change the thickness and color of the outline around the boxes using these settings. We'll leave these at the defaults, a black outline with a thickness of one. In a mosaic plot, we normally use a different outline color for boxes representing table cells with zero counts. I'll use the drop down to select something that I find more attractive. To prevent boxes that represent zero or small counts being too small to see, the minimum box size field sets a lower limit on the dimension of the boxes in both row and column directions. The default is 0.002, but if you think some of the boxes in your mosaic plot are still too small, you can increase this value. The relative gap size field lets you create small gaps between the boxes to visually separate them, which we recommend you do. You can set gap size from 1 to 10 times the default gap size, or if you wanted no gaps, you can set this value to 0. We'll leave this at its default setting of 1. Similarly, the size of the factor labels can be changed using the Size for Axis Labels field. If you have very long factor labels, you may want to reduce the label size to prevent them from overlapping. Alternatively, the settings in the Truncate Factor Labels pane can be used to abbreviate the labels by specifying a maximum label width. Any characters beyond this width will be truncated. If this box is selected, the maximum label width will apply to all factors. However, if you want a different level of truncation for the different factors, deselect this, then set the level of truncation you want for each factor. So, I could select 6, then set a maximum label width of 1, which would result in the label female being truncated to F, and the label male being truncated to M. But I don't think we need to truncate the labels for our Titanic data set, so I'll reset this the way it was. Finally, recall that the boxes of the mosaic plot are coloured according to the last factor in the row factors field. The colours used for each level of this factor can be set in the Colours for Groups pane. On the Data tab, we selected Survived as the last row factor. It has two levels, No and Yes. At the moment, No boxes will be filled with red and Yes boxes with white. I'll change these to Navy for No and Yellow for Yes. Now we've set the options, let's look at the final tab on this dialog menu, Frame. Frame is a standard tab on a GenStack graphics menu. It's used to control the dimensions and the appearance of the frame our graph is displayed in. We'll leave all these settings at their defaults. But remember, if you want to know more about any of the settings on this tab, just click the Help button. We're now ready to produce our mosaic plot, so go ahead and click Run. This mosaic plot can give us insights into features and associations within our table of counts. Looking at the left side of the plot, we can see that approximately a third of the passengers were crew and that most of the crew were male. You'll recall that we used purple boxes to indicate table cells with zero counts, and we can see here that no crew were children, which makes sense. We can also gain insights into how the proportion of passengers that survived differed between ticket class, sex and age. In our graph, the yellow boxes correspond to survivors and the navy blue boxes represent those that died. The mosaic plot shows us that the proportion of males that survived was reasonably low, around about a quarter, regardless of ticket class. In comparison, for some classes, the survival rates for females were very high. Most females in first class survived, around 95%, compared to less than 50% in third class. Slightly less than half of the female children in third class survived, and slightly less than half of the female adults in third class survived. This mosaic plot makes it clear that the survival chances of passengers on the Titanic was directly related to their ticket class, age, and sex. Graphics are a key component of statistical analysis, enabling data to be visualized and summarized. To learn more about GenStat's suite of graphical tools, 
check out the Genstack Graphics Guide.